Hi, let's learn about infectious crisis. Infectious crisis is an acute or subacute respiratory disease. It is infectious and primarily affects nasal passage. This disease is caused by Avibacterium paragynarum, which is a normal gram negative root bacteria. It also has three antigenic types, which are A, B, and C. It also requires V factor for growth, which can be found in blood agar. The source of infection is either clinical sick or asymptomatic chicken. It also can be transmitted through inhalation or ingestion, water and feed, and formites. The incubation period is about 1 to 3 days with high mobility, low mortality about 2%, and recovered chicken can become a carrier. So, AV bacterium paragalinarum. This bacteria actually infects chickens of all ages, but the susceptibility of the infection increases with their age. Hence, growing chickens and layers have higher chance to get this infection compared to the young chicks. The bacteria can be transmitted via conjunctival or nasal route, and the details will be explained again later. The virulence factor of the bacteria is fibril protein, but how this virulence factor causes infectious crisis is not well known yet. It has an incubation period of 1 to 3 days and followed by a rapid onset of disease over just a 2 to 3 day period. The whole flock can be infected within just 10 days. The course of duration of infectious crisis is around 2 to 3 weeks, but the duration can be longer if there is presence of concurrent diseases such as mycoplasmosis caused by Mycoplasma scali septicum. Now, let's talk about how infectious crisis spread among the flock. As I mentioned earlier, this bacteria only transmit horizontally, meaning that there's no egg transmission from the hen to the chick is involved. It is transmitted either via direct contact of conjunctival with contaminated respiratory exudate and contaminated drinking water, or inhalation of contaminated aerosol droplets released by chronically ill chickens or healthy carriers for the bacteria. So, when the water tank is contaminated with the bacteria, the drinking water in the water trough will also be contaminated too. When some of the chickens from the flock drink the water, they will be in contact with the bacteria, allowing the bacteria to gain entrance via conjunctival or nasal cavity, causing rhinitis and sinusitis. As this progresses, this will cause facial swelling and respiratory signs such as nasal discharge, ocular discharge, nips near, and most importantly, sneezing. And when these infected chickens sneeze, they will release contaminated aerosol droplets into the air. These droplets will then be inhaled by other healthy chickens, causing colonization and infection, leading to production of similar clinical signs. Alright, what will happen after rhinitis and sinusitis? Well, the bacteria will enter the blood circulation from the inflamed sites and travel simultaneously to other organs causing systemic signs which are very life-threatening. In the end, the chicken will die due to respiratory failure or hypoglycemia if no proper treatment is given. If the sick chickens are treated on time, they will recover from the infection and become carriers for a long period of time. These carriers together with chronically ill chickens will become the reservoir for AV bacterium paragalinarum causing infectious crisis. The general clinical signs that can be observed is inappetence due to the inappetence. This will lead to decreased feed consumption which in turn leads to decreased growth rate. Whereas for the layer hand, they will show decreased egg production. Main and important clinical signs of infectious coryza we can observe the swelling of infraorbital sinus. In the green frame picture, we can clearly see that the infraorbital sinus is quite swollen near the eye. Another uh, clinical finding is swollen water. In the blue frame picture and also in the green frame picture, we can observe conjunctivitis accompanied with eyelid adherence possibly due to the presence of
sticky ocular discharge. So the other clinical signs presents are nasal and ocular discharge. So you can see in the blue frame picture they are uh, nasal discharge they appear to be serous while for the ocular discharge the, there is a presence of yellow yellowish uh, discharge which which could be purulent ocular discharge frame picture we can observe facial edema which means there is a obvious facial swelling for the necropsy findings during post-mortem we can observe the purulent inflammation of intraorbital sinus for these pictures we can see that there is a caseous inflammation of purulent axillary in the intraorbital sinus. Apart from purulent inflammation, scatteral mucor inflammation of the intraorbital sinus is also reported in affected chickens. So, for the other necropsy finding, eyelid adherence is common. In the red frame picture, we can see there is the ocular discharge which appears to be serous. So the necropsy finding of the trachea in the red frame picture to so the proximal part of the trachea where the hand is placed, there is some observable congestion and edema. Whereas in the lower part, you can see that there is uh, reddening which indicates hyperemia. This finding, we can, we can conclude that trachea is present. Whereas for the histopathology, of the trachea, we can see that there's hyperplasia of tracheal epithelium with the alteration or loss of structure and also some degree of desilation or loss of cilia. So we can conclude it indicates a tracheitis. We now talk about how to diagnose the disease. So bacterial culture can be done by using the sinus exudates obtained from the infected chicken and swap on the chocolate agar and dew drop like satellitic colonies can be seen. Also we can do gram staining by use also using the sinus exudate as a smear and the gram negative bipolar staining road shaped bacteria can be reviewed. Other chemical tests can also be done such as the catalase test, which is very important because a pathogenic strain of the bacteria is always catalase negative. Other tests can be done, such as the PCR test, and also inoculation with nasal exudates from infected chickens into the susceptible chicken. There is no suitable serologic test can be done, but HI tests can be used. The differential diagnosis is as follows. This should be ruled out before we make the diagnosis. As for control and treatment, the most effective way is by prevention, such as we can implement the all-in all out system for the chicken and also vaccinates them if there is a risk of infection for the bullets by using live vaccine or bacterines. As for the treatments, you can use antibiotics such as erythromycin and oxytetracycline, fluoroquinolones and macrolides by using the route of medicated water or feed. Sulfonamides and sulfonamide trimetoprim and other combinations can also be used.